This is the RPS Products. I'm Richard and today I've got a bag of MOSFETs. Now, I got these MOSFETs from Amazon. Nice little knuckless sort of TO220 package. Um, you can get them from other places like eBay or AliExpress or some other place like that. Um, if you want really good ones, then you're going to have to head over to somewhere like um, Digikey or Farnell Element 14 or any other reputable electronic supplier, um, wherever you can find them. Um, I'm not sure how much availability there is for this particular MOSFET. Um, so I don't know. Um, this one is the IRF 740N channel MOSFET. And I don't really know anything about it. So before I get and try it and do a test circuit with this thing, um, I need to go and have a look at the data sheet. Now, I'd say I don't know anything about it, but I have done some reading uh, and a bit of investigation about MOSFETs. So I trying to understand what a MOSFET is and what it does. Um, so I'm going to use this as a switch, basically, um, and see how it operates, because I've never really done anything with MOSFETs. So I think I better go and have a look at the data sheet and then get a circuit together. So here we have the data sheet for the uh, IRF 740 N-channel power MOSFET. Um, let's have a quick look at some of the overall ratings for it. Um, VDS, uh, drain source voltage, 400 volts, that's a lot of voltage. Um, it takes to turn it on. Uh, RDS on, and then it shows its resistance while on. Um, VGS equals 10 volts. That's a lot. That's a lot of voltage to turn the thing on, but then it will handle up to 400 uh, 400 volts from the drain to source. That's a lot of voltage. Um, this really is a high power N channel MOSFET. Uh, quick circuit diagram there, gate pin out. I wonder what the current rating for this is. Uh, drain source voltage 400, gate source voltage um, 20 volts continuous drain current at room temperature 10 amps uh, obviously when it gets a bit warmer at uh, 100 uh, degrees centigrade 6.3 amps that's still a hell of a lot of current uh, pulse drain current 40 amps you could kill someone with that couldn't you it's really dangerous um, anyway if you want to have a look at this it's uh, day cheap by Vichy um, go find it have a look this is really a really quite a high powered um, MOSFET but um, never mind we'll go and uh, have a look and um, see if I can uh, make it work okay so I've got it set up here on a little circuit so a quick look at what I've got set up and this is what I'm doing I basically got a motor I put a diode in there got a chunky diode because um, back EMF whatever they call it you know it gets lots of current ends up in there that's not going anywhere it can uh, destroy things so got a diode in there then this is actually the uh, the MOSFET um, that I'm working with it's an end channel and it does actually have its own internal um, diode in there for some circuit protection don't want it to blow up and then on this side I've got a DC power supply I've got 7 volts there from one power supply and then another DC 10 volts which is going to come to my gate now I've drawn it like this with a positive and negative because when I turn the gate on I'm going to connect connect up to the positive but when I need to switch this thing off I need to make, take that lead out of there and connect it into the negative so I can then flip the switch and it'll have a negative voltage and that voltage will be negative to the source and that will uh, should turn the um, the MOSFET off. So so here we go. So I have here two power supplies. This big one is going to supply the seven volts um, to the motor and the MOSFET. And the blue one is going to supply the ten volts to the gate. Um, so let's turn it on and um, see what we get. Now, as you can see on here, I carefully carefully. Um, connect this up. I don't want it shorting out. Um, and there's a heat sink on there because I imagine that this is going to get quite warm, really. Um, there's the diode, big ass diode in the way. So let's get these power supplies turned on. Uh, get this set up to 10 volts. Um, get this one on. 
It's a bit noisy, there's a fan in the back there. It is, after all, just a computer power supply that I've uh, reworked, which is, it works brilliantly, does what I want it to. And then there's a little bit of circuitry in it, it's got the LM318 in there. 7 volts there, 10 volts for the gate. At the moment it's not turned on, so um, let's do that and see what happens. There we go. Now the motor is running, I can turn off the gate voltage, which I've done. The gate voltage is off. Wow, that's noisy. Ah, that's a hell of a motor. Um, and the unit is still running. The gate voltage just turns on the MOSFET. But to turn it off, I need to have a negative voltage. So I'm going to put that into the negative gate um, and turn it off. And there we go, it's turned off because the... Um, and I've switched that back off so there's nothing to the gate. And uh, that turns it on and off. Now I wonder what current this motor is drawing, as it's quite a decent size motor. Well, for electronics it is. Um, so uh, let's get an ammeter in there and find out. Turn off these power supplies. Now let's get that ammeter. Okay, I've got my multimeter in now. Um, and this is going to tell me how much current this thing's drawing. Um, I wonder how much. It's going to be. It's going to be decent, isn't it? You know, a few hundred milliamps, maybe, maybe even up to an amp. I don't know. Well, we'll find out. Here we go. Oh no, still got this plugged into the negative, so that's just going to turn it off. That'll turn it on. Let's have a go now. Whoa! Well, you look at that, man alive. That's that's 1.665 amps. That's a hell of a lot. Whoa, I think I'm going to turn this off because that's quite mad. Um, did you see that? That's 7 volts. That's what the motor was drawing from this for this MOSFET. And this thing can handle up to 400 volts. It's a bit over the top, really. Um, so, getting a negative on there to turn it off quickly, because uh, that's a lot of current. Man, let's just, um, let's do that. Wow, that is, that is something. Let's, um, let's turn this down. I wonder if turning the gate voltage down will, um, have any effect on that. Let's, uh, that was 9 volts on the gate. Let's, let's turn it down to something like 7 volts, so they're both 7 volts, about that. See how that, what that does for the, uh, for the gate voltage. Yeah, that is still whacking a hell of a load of current. I'm holding this thing and I've got 1.6 amps running through the darn thing. Let's get it turned off. <laughs> that thing's just so dangerous. Man, but that, that's, let's have a feel. It's not even... Well, it's a bit warm, so it's obviously clacking quite a bit of um, current through it. But it wasn't a problem. Did it all right? Yeah. MOSFET. So there you go. So that's me using the MOSFET as a switch. It works great as a switch, especially at um, high voltages. Um, seemed to work okay. Do I need to know any special mass, though, to um, put it into a circuit correctly? Don't know, something I'll have to look into. Do I need to be careful about how I'm using them? I suppose I probably do. Uh, as you saw, the MOSFET needs a decent voltage on the gate to turn it on, but at least this one does. I expect the uh, lower powered ones probably use less voltage to turn them on, but um, yeah, then they're uh, definitely voltage driven devices, or at least this one is. Yes, you do get a lot of current running through it as well. So the other thing is, um, this could be tricky to implement in a circuit because the way I'd done it these would need a positive rail and a negative rail um, below the zero volts to uh, to make it work properly uh, which I suppose you can do it's a bit like with an op amp um, positive and negative rail um, so creating a split rail power supply of some sort I don't know um, I suppose unless you're able to raise that voltage the uh, for the source voltage above ground um, obviously some other circuitry involved there to um, hold that voltage higher than ground and then 
when the gate goes to ground or is connected to ground then obviously it'll be lower than the source so it will turn it off but um yeah extra circuitry involved so looks like I have lots more testing to do um, before I can properly understand the MOSFETs um, and how they work I think I should maybe get some other MOSFETs lower powered ones rather than these IRF740 monsters that I've got um, and see what happens more testing to do so if you didn't like this video well you know what to do if you did give us a thumbs up subscribe and all comments are welcome um, especially comments about this uh, MOSFET because I don't really know how to use them and um, hopefully I'll catch you next time. Click the bell icon.